when making Lewis dot structures, oftentimes knowing if there's all single bonds or if there are multiple bonds such as double and triple bonds can be a tricky situation. So you can utilize a method called the TV method to help give you a little bit of confidence in knowing whether or not you have simply single bonds or if you have extra bonds. So the rules and the steps are all on the left there. But if we summarize it, basically what we do is we're going to assume that we all have single bonds. That's how we're going to start every single problem. If you're unsure and you take the number of electrons in your drawing and you compare them to the valence electrons, which is the number of electrons that you're actually working with, the difference between them will tell you how many extra bonds you need. If there's no difference, then it's done and you have all single bonds. For every two electron difference, you need to add an extra bond. You need to have more sharing and less electrons in your picture. So let's do 10 problems to see how we can utilize this uh, method. First problem is C5H12. Uh, on every single screen, you're going to see a checklist in the upper left. What this means is if I look at my picture at the ending, do I have the right number of valence electrons? And then does every atom except for H, B, and Al have an octet? Reminder, H can only have two electrons, so just a single bond line, and B and Al both have uh, three valence electrons, which allows them to only have six electrons total. Also, always think two important steps or two important ideas is that you always are trying to think about a center atom and you're always trying to think about symmetry. So uh, looking at a periodic table, carbon uh, is in the 14th group. So it has four valence electrons and hydrogen has one. So five times four plus one times 12 gives you 32 valence electrons. Now let's just break this one problem down into its uh, basic elements in this. If you're thinking about carbon and you're thinking about hydrogen, in general, carbon bonds four times and hydrogen only bonds once. So it would make sense that my carbon is my center atom because it can bond to more uh, elements within a structure. So if I think about that and carbon would be uh, written out with my valence electron dots like that, uh, I have five carbons, so that means I probably have five center atoms. And if I'm thinking about symmetry, then my hydrogens are probably going to try to orientate themselves around the carbons with those lone electrons pairing up with the other lone electrons so it can make a bond. And I can distribute them evenly in a symmetrical fashion. And hence, I have my bonds between my H's, my C's, to my C's, to my C's in a nice, clean Lewis structure. Now, I feel very confident in this picture because I know carbon bonds four times and hydrogen only bonds once, and I see that consistently throughout the drawing. But in my head, or I could do it on paper, I can utilize the TV method to do a quick check. So the T is how many electrons I have in my actual drawing. My V is how many electrons I'm supposed to actually have from the formula. And if it turns out to be the same, then no extra bonds are needed, and I am done, and it is a correct uh, drawing. Next one, PO43 minus. Charges can give students a little bit of anxiety, uh, but all it is is uh, adding or removing electrons uh, with the total number of valence electrons from the formula. So P is 5, and O is 6, and there's four of them. So I'm going to have a total of 32 valence electrons. Where did I get that? Well, there's the 5 from the phosphorus. There's the six times the four. And then you have to be very confident in the fact that electrons are negatively charged. So that means I'm adding three more electrons. I'm not removing three electrons. I'm adding three electrons. So there are my 32. So what are we going to do? Every time we assume we have single bonds. By assuming you have single bonds, you're actually going to be correct most of the time. At some point, you got to pull the trigger and just go for it. So I look at it. I think center atom, and I think symmetry. My phosphorus is outnumbered. So it's going to be uh, in the center. It also has the lower electronegative value, but it's easier just to recognize that it's outnumbered. I'm going to uh, put the oxygens around it, and then I'm going to make everything have an octet, regardless of how many electrons it's supposed to have. Don't overthink it. If I bond it once, it needs six more electrons. So you can see each oxygen has six extra electrons, and then the bonds are all going to the P. One thing to point out is that those charges on an ion are really, really important when I'm writing a, a Lewis structure. I need to show the reader that that structure has three extra electrons. If you simply look at the P's and the four O's, 
it does not have 32 electrons. It should only have 29. So that negative three is really important. All right, so is this drawing correct? Well, my picture has 32 electrons. Be smart. If you have six dots and a line, that's eight. And you can consistently see around that P that each of them have eight, or they all look the same. So eight times four is 32. By counting each one separately, you're only opening yourself up to making some errors. So that is 32. Uh, I'm supposed to have 32 for my valence electrons, so the difference is zero. So no extra bonds are needed. This picture is correct. I'm done. I feel very confident in moving on. The next one, P2. On the periodic table, that is group 15 or 5A, so 5 times 2 is 10. So again, assume all single bonds. Just bond the P to the other P and then complete your octets. Regardless if you look at that and go, well, does that mean that each phosphorus has seven electrons? You're overthinking things. If I had single bonds, this is what it would look like. What does my picture have? It has 14 electrons. I'm only supposed to have 10. So what does that mean? That means my picture has four too many electrons. I can only have 10. So it needs to share more and I need to add two extra bonds. Now, where do you add those extra bonds? You cannot just add them off of an element into space. It has to be added onto an existing bond. So that's why we kind of write extra bonds. Um, it needs to be added to a bond that is already present in your drawing. So in this case, you only have one choice. So that single bond is gonna quickly have two extra bonds attached to it, which makes it a triple bond, right? Now, if you handed it in like this or you ended your problem, you're not correct for a couple of reasons. One, your P's do not have an octet. They both only have six electrons. Three lines touching each make six because each line is worth two. And also, you don't have the right number of valence electrons. But I don't count the electrons at this point. I count octets. So I have two, four, six. I need to add two more on the left to make eight. And then two, four, six, add two more on the right to make eight. And there I have octets. By completing my octets, I actually end up with the right number of valence electrons. You can count it up, two, four, six, eight, ten. The dots count as two, each line counts as two. You're good to go. So it's gonna have a triple bond between those two phosphorus atoms. And always needs to equal my number of valence electrons. All right, sometimes you're gonna run into some formulas that look a little confusing, but it doesn't always need to be. Now this formula is written in such a way uh, due to uh, functional groups and things that you were going to learn later in chemistry. But uh, it's also helpful for us to figure out the overall Lewis structure. So first, let's make sure we know the number of valence electrons. You have carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens. So those are fours, ones, and sixes, a total of 18. Again, you can count those up yourself. But let's talk a little bit about how we break this down and make it as easy as possible for us. Remember, carbons can bond four times, so that makes for a real great center atom. It is the center atom, so that's gonna be in the middle. So I look at that, and I have two center atoms, but I have a better question for you than just why is it written the way it is? It's why isn't it written exactly like C2H4O? Why aren't the C's together and the H's together? They're distributed out because of functional groups and how they're laid out around the C's, but we can use that to our advantage. Because I know C's are my center atom, I know that those three H's are going to be connected to that C, and this H and this O are going to be bonded to that C. So I'm going to use that to my advantage. So before I reveal what this is going to look like, I would start with drawing two C's and bond them. Then I put three H's around the first carbon, I put an H on the second carbon, and an O on the second carbon. And I'm going to assume all single bonds. Now, it may not look exactly like this. You might put the oxygen on the bottom or to the right, and the H might not be like that on the right side as well. It doesn't matter as long as your elements are bonded to the proper elements with the right number of electrons and uh, bond lines. Now, is this correct? I'm going to tell you now, my gut says no. And the reason why is that carbons bond four times. And I don't see four bond lines. I see three bond lines and two uh, electrons, one lone pair. Also, we know that oxygen usually bonds twice. Not always, but a lot of times it bonds twice. So because of that, I'm gonna assume that there's an extra bond. So I'm gonna count these up and it says 20, but I'm only supposed to have 18. So that is a difference of two. So the TV has given me confidence in saying, you know what, I have too many electrons. This isn't quite right. So I need one extra bond. Now you can look at this and say, well, I have six bond lines. I can place them anywhere. Well, if you look at the three, four, 
bonds between the C's and the H's, if you place an extra bond on that, you're going to break the duet of the H. Hydrogens cannot have more than two electrons because it's in the first energy level. So you can't put those on any of those uh, hydrogens. You can't put them between the C's because if you did, the carbon on the left would have five bonds. That's breaking an octet. We can't do that. So actually, we're limited. We only have one place to put that extra bond, and that's between the C and the O. And what it does do is it satisfies the need for carbon to bond four times and the oxygen to bond twice. You can add that up, and that will equal 18 electrons. So I have a double bonded uh, O and C. And this is called an aldehyde, but that's something that we don't have to worry about for now. All right, a very similar problem, NH2OH. Again, I don't see the H's all combined, so that is actually a helpful hint. Uh, N's are fives, H's are ones, and uh, O's are six, so that's going to equal a total of 14 valence electrons. So if I place N in the middle, and I put two H's on that, I put an H on that other O, and then I just make sure that the O is bonded to the AN. If I take that last H and bond it to the N, then the O is unable to bond at all, and then it's sitting outside of my molecule. So I add those all up, and I have 14 from that drawing. After completing my octets, I have 14 electrons in my picture. Well, I'm supposed to have 14, so it's zero. So again, TV just tells me, hey, this is right. You don't always have to redraw the picture or add extra bonds, but this gives you some confidence saying, hey, by adding all just single bonds and completing my octet, this is the proper structure. C2F2. If I add those all up, that's 22 valence electrons. Again, we keep saying that carbons are my center atoms, and I want symmetry. So it would make sense that I place my carbons in the middle, and I put one fluorine on each side of, of the two carbons. Now, I'm not going to add electrons this time. This is how uh, I'm hoping that you start to uh, approach these problems, where you don't add the electrons, you mentally do it. So then if you add extra bonds, you can just do it on the skeleton that you originally drew, and you only have to draw one picture. So if you mentally say there's two electrons above the F, below the F, and to the left of the F, then you count the bond above the C, below the C, count the next bond in the middle, above, below, the next bond above the F, below the F, to the right of the F, you should get 26 electrons. Now, why didn't I draw it? Because again, I don't want to have to draw two pictures. If you feel like you have to draw those out, please do so. But... The issue here is that my picture can only have 22. So that means that I have a four electron difference. That's two electron, two extra bonds that are needed. Now, you could think that you are going to put those between the C's and the F's. The issue with that is if you put them between the C's and the F's, the carbons are only going to have three bonds and then two uh, electrons uh, on the top of each atom. Carbons do not like lone pairs. Carbons like bonds. So try to satisfy the idea that carbons like to bond four times, and we know that halogens like to bond once. So what I would do is if you pretend that what's in the box is just the picture above, I wouldn't draw this again. I would just have made my two lines, my two extra bonds, right on my original skeleton. So as I just put up on the screen, remember, Cs like to have four bond lines. That is just such a helpful uh, hint and approach that will just keep you uh, making the right decisions when you're making these Lewis structures. If I finish this right now, uh, I am not complete. A lot of times we get excited that we have determined the number of bonds and we've figured out where they need to go and we move on. You got to make sure you complete your octets. So those Fs still need uh, electrons. If you add that up now, that should equal 22. And I know I'm right. BFI2. So we have borons were three, F7, and then two I's are both seven as well. It's going to be 24 valence electrons. So if I assume all single bonds, I put my boron in the middle because it can bond to the most uh, elements. I get that. Now, if you're looking at that and going, something's not right, then you're remembering that boron and aluminum are exceptions. Boron and aluminum can only bond three times. So let's just blow those uh, lone pairs out of here. Ah, oh, there we go. So I'm going to count those up, and each outer atom has eight electrons around them. So there's three of those. So eight times three is 24. I'm supposed to have 24. So there I am. I am zero. So that is a completed and correct 
Lewis structure. All right, another ion here. So SO3 2 minus. Again, students get really uh, anxious and uh, have a lot of doubt when they see a polyatomic ion, but it doesn't need to be the case. So sulfur is six and oxygen is six times three. And then we're gonna take that extra two electrons from the charge and that's gonna equal 26. As I continue to repeat, assume it has single bonds, go for it. Put that S in that middle, put the oxygens around the outsides. Make sure that that middle uh, sulfur has an octet with those two extra electrons on it. And then you gotta put that bracket saying that that has a negative two charge. If you add those all up, that's 26. You have eight around uh, each O and then those two extra ones on the S. This works out. This is a completed Lewis structure. No extra bonds needed. All right, we have two more to go. So Si2, S42 minus. This one can look very intimidating. Uh, one thing I want to talk about with silicone quickly is that silicone is right below carbon on the periodic table. So it will act very similarly to carbon. And in Lewis structures, it basically acts exactly like carbon. It has four uh, valence electrons. That means it can bond four times. So it will be my center atom. All right, so two times four plus four times six plus two. I have 34 valence electrons. So if I assume all single bonds, this one gets a little messy. And the reason why it gets a little messy is those center atoms. You got to put those extra electrons on there. So right then, I don't feel good about that. Because if silicone's like carbon, carbon should have four lines. And this does not have four bond lines. So I'm probably going to need extra bonds. So if you add that all up, that is 38 on my picture on the left. There are eight around each S. Eight times four is 32 plus the electrons on the silicone, plus the bond in the middle, that's another six. So 32 plus six is 38. I'm only supposed to have 34. That's a difference of four. I need two extra bonds. Here's the issue. I have a lot of bond options. Look at that. I have five places where I could place bonds. So when you start realizing that you can probably place your bonds in more than one spot, that is what we call a resonance structure. That's when more than one Lewis structure can be drawn. It's usually involving multiple bonds. So let's take a look at where we can place those extra bonds. I need to place two, but it can be tricky. It's not always obvious. So let me place one. I, I'm going to place one in the middle. If I place the next bond, there's an issue. If you count that silicone, all the bonds touching that silicone, there are one, two, three, four, five bond lines. That's 10 electrons. We cannot break octets. So, okay, maybe that was wrong. Let me move it to somewhere else. I move it to the upper right one. Now the right silicone has five lines. I'm breaking an octet. And if I continue to move through this, I'm breaking it on the left. I'm breaking an octet on the right. Okay, let's put them both in the middle. Well, if I put them both in the middle, now I'm causing both silicones to have five bonds going to... Uh, each one. I'm breaking the octets again. Okay, maybe it can't be in the middle. Let's try uh, both on the left side. Well, that's two, four on the top, middle three, bottom two, four, five. That's five bond lines again. Shoot. To the right, same idea. So what I've just learned on this problem is that it appears that both bonds, when I'm adding them, cannot be on the same atom. So what else can be done? Well, if they can't be on the same atom, they got to be on different ones. So if I put one on top on the left and put one on top on the right, well, that, that's going to work. So if I put on top, I could go on the bottom. Is there anything else I could do? Well, what top and bottom of opposite center atoms? If I start doing that, I hope that you recognize that there are four resonance structures. So here's my best suggestion to you. You write all four skeletons out. They are identical. You put arrows in between, two-way arrows. You bracket all of them, saying that they're all minus two instead of having to bracket each one. And then what you do is you distribute in a systematic way the bonds and where you think they should be. So here's just one suggestion of how you could do this. You put two on top, two on bottom, diagonal one direction, and then diagonal the other. And then how do we complete this? By adding electrons completing the octet. I'm not counting 34 electrons any longer. I see in the upper left that I have two uh, bond lines, so that needs four more electrons. On the bottom, I have one bond line. I need six more electrons. So if I just supply all of the electrons to the existing bonds that already exist, each structure should have 34 electrons 
between the electron dots and the bond lines themselves. And that is a four resonant structure uh, depiction of Si2S4 2 minus. Final problem, ClO2 plus one. So Cl is seven, oxygen six times two, and then the plus means I have one less electron. So I got to remove an electron. So that's only 18. So as we continue to do, assume all single bonds. So there's my skeleton. If you mentally picture how many electrons you have, above, below, to the side, adding it with the bonds, I hope that you come up with 20. There should be 20 electrons there if they all had single bonds. But I'm only supposed to have 18. So that's a difference of two. So I need one extra bond. So where can I place that extra bond? Can I place it on the left? Can I place it on the right? If you're thinking, well, I could place it on the left or the right, you are correct. We need two resonance structures. You can place it on both. You need to show that. So there I am. I place it on the left. I place it on the right. I put an arrow in the middle, put the bracket, put the charge. And how do I finish? I need to place my electrons to complete my octets. And there are two resonance structures of ClO2 plus one. So this is how TV can help. TV can help us with our Lewis structures in knowing that there's all single bonds. TV can help us with the confidence when there are double and triple bonds. And it helps us understand if it's a resonance structure and shows us in an easier way how many resonance structures there are because we're simply figuring out the number of bonds. We're not moving all the electrons around. We just, we're just we knowing how many bonds there are so we know how much sharing is occurring between the elements.